we're going to get started here. <clears throat> it's going to be a quick, uh, pretty quick lecture this afternoon. We're going to be talking about Big O, and this is more or less a concept that you should try to be thinking about during your, um, while you are starting to write your algorithms and things like that. And this is definitely going to be a concept that shows up during your interviews. Uh, speaking of interviews, next week we're going to start, um, I'm going to basically take a gander through everyone's LinkedIn. I'm going to take a look through your, and then we're just going to do some like basic interview questions. Uh, so each week we will build up, like, tell me about yourself and then tell me, like, tell me about a time you failed, things, things of that nature. But you have to be able to rattle them off like that because that's what's differentiating between someone who's going to get a job and someone who's not. You have to be well-versed and well-practiced inside of an interview. And then we'll get into like technical whiteboarding interviews and we're gonna start that uh, starting on Monday. Uh, but part of your interview process is gonna be, and as part of your coding process, you're gonna be learning about something called big O notation. And big O is basically understanding how efficiently your algorithm is going to run. So, um, in order to talk about Big O, we have to understand the concept of benchmarking. Benchmarking is the act of timing your code, and how long does it take to execute? From the time that I hit enter and to the time that your, your program finishes, how much time did that take? We're basically seeing, is your code slow? Um, and if it's slow, how can we improve the speed? Now, there are some things that, uh, there are some things you can do to make your code better, and there are other things that's just simply a limitation on the language. So as I said, Ruby on Rails was the framework that Twitter used when they first started. It was fast, it got everything off the ground very quickly, but Twitter as a whole, I mean, not Twitter, Ruby on Rails as a whole, in terms of querying, reading and writing to the database, uh, which we'll talk about next week, can only handle about 200 requests a second. Now that's a lot for most, that's a lot for most uh, applications, but now Twitter, you can kind of think is millions of hits like a minute. So I don't know how many that is, how many, I don't know how much it is, but it's much more than that 200, uh, I'm sorry, 200 hits per second that, that the active record can take on. So there are some things that you can write to make your code faster, and there are some things that you just can't handle. But the, the things that we can handle, it involves things like big O notation, how complex is my algorithm? Um, if your code is slow, uh, and you're writing bad code, you're basically asking for your program to be slow and ultimately people to go anywhere away from your site. Um, I think the average amount of time that someone spends waiting for a website is like less than three seconds. You can kind of imagine when you're on a website, it's not responding even for a second or two, you get irritated and say, I'll just come back later. That kind of stuff comes back directly to you as well because you have to say, the code that I'm writing has to be efficient and as fast as possible. Um, right now, the code you're writing is largely not the most efficient, but that's okay because you only have, you're only demonstrating it to 10 people in here. But what if you're starting to write code and you use that kind of mentality over and over again? Um, you're gonna write very slow code. Um, so yeah, for us, we wanna write algorithms and code that's as fast as possible, code that uses as little memory as possible. Um, yeah, if you write bad code, your site's, site's gonna be slow. So I'm gonna grab this right here and we're gonna more or less just run it. Grab it, I'll dump it over here for now. Something easy to do with a denial of service attack on a site that's using Ruby on Rails? Uh, so, before we get into that, what is, a, what is a DDoS attack? What's a denial of service attack? Well, I know it's like sending too many requests for site to come up. Yes, yeah. Um, Overloading the server, though, not the database. Yeah. Server, right? yeah. You're, load, you're overloading a server. So it's the idea of like, so a DDoS attack is a very, very popular type of attack for a lot of people. It's basically uh, somebody tries to make so many requests that your server crashes. Um, so it's not, it's, not a it's not a database like connectivity issue. It's how much your server can handle. The idea is if I had 100 people, and I said, everyone go through that door right now. Like, and we'd all get stuck, no one would get through. It's kind of like getting off of a plane, right? You always have to wait for quite a while because you have to wait for one at a time to get out. But if I only had 
five people going in and out, like we can line up efficiently and, go, and walk through. But if you had a hundred people all at one time, that's what a DDoS attack is. It's saying no one else can get in. I have to deal with all of this hundred people at once. Uh, they have programs actually that they've written where you can just type in a website, click a button and it'll just DDoS a attack. Uh, it'll attack that website. Of course you'll get arrested and thrown in jail for like five years or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, it wouldn't, a DDoS attack is not going to affect your, uh, it doesn't have much to do with big O notation uh, and, and the speed of the code that we write. All right, so I have this little bit of code here and I have this require benchmark at the top. In require benchmark, benchmark is a library inside of Ruby, similar to CSV and things of that nature. This is a library that's given to us for free. And I have two methods. First one is just print high, which is just gonna put hello out to the screen. And then a repeat times method that basically says like, put high this many times out on the screen. This block of code basically says, I'm going to, I have the benchmark class, capital B, and dot BM. BM is a method that's built in on the benchmark class called benchmark. Benchmark this 20 times. I'm going to report how long it took to, uh, to fire off the first one, and then how long it took to fire off the second one. So we'll just run this and see what our result is. All right, so that, uh, that first method uh, only took, you know, uh, it took this much time to print out. And the second one took, you know, much more time to print out. I mean, these numbers are very small, 0. 0.00015 versus 0. 0.00266. But you can kind of see um, just on this very basic example that printing out something one time versus printing out something 50 times does take extra time. And the idea is like, let's, let's try to keep things as, as short as possible. And we'll kind of keep this up for now, um, just to, we'll, we'll benchmark a few other things as we go along. <clears throat> um, we'll go over this a little bit later. I'll, I'll actually just send, actually it's kind of fun to watch, but I'll, I'll do it later. Uh, it's basically a visualization of how different sorting, I'll just speed it up really fast. Uh, it's basically an, a visualization of how, how different sorting algorithms perform. Uh, so, you can, so you can kind of see there are different types of sorting algorithms. You can see that a quick sort and a comb sort and a bubble sort, like this is how fast it's going to uh, emerge sort. That's, these are already finished. Um, you can see that other ones like a bubble sort that we created ourselves takes forever. You know, it's still running right now if you had a, like a, diff, a specific data set and that's because of the way that it's written. They, bubble sort is one of the worst ones because you have to go through the whole thing, go through the whole thing, go through the whole thing until it's, in, until it's completely finished. Uh, I'll play this twice as fast so you can just kind of see. I missed the, what's the fastest one? I believe it is, we'll find out. And that's for a random data set. This is random data set. Uh, sure. Quick sort. Uh, no, whatever. No, 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 it was the center one. Quick sort was the center. No. What is called quick sort? Oh, no, shell sort. No, that's this one. I think that one. I think quick sort. Quick sort one? They were close to tie. Yeah. But you can kind of see, like, some things run faster than others. That's the main point I'm trying to make. Uh, it's And it's largely dependent on how like how efficiently you actually write your, your algorithms. So uh, what is big O notation? Uh, some people have some experience with this, but the formal definition is it's a measurement basic. It's like a mathematical measurement to see how complex your function is based on the size of your input that you give it. So the O is how complex it is and how big your input size is, is the end. Basically it's how long does it take to run? How complex is your code? This is a little bit of a chart to basically go over what the, oops, to go over different things. So like the best, the best big O notation for a specific algorithm is O of one. And O of one basically says like, it's just basically like put hello. That's the fastest one possible. It doesn't matter what it is it's going to, it doesn't matter what the size of your data is because you're only doing one thing 
Um, then you have O log of n, which means that if you have 10 times the data, it takes twice as much time. Um, logs are a little bit interesting. Uh, we're not going to get too much into it. Uh, basically, what I want you to know is O of 1, it doesn't matter. The speed doesn't matter based on the data set that I'm getting in. It's going to be constant every single time. Printing hello one time is going to be the same no matter if you give me 50 arguments or one argument because I'm only doing one thing. O of n is the most popular one. It's basically saying the larger my data set gets, that's the amount of time the extra that it's gonna to take to run. So if I say print the numbers, print these numbers in an array, and I give you an array of one number, uh, that's going to be, it's gonna take one, like x, x amount of time. If I give you an array of 10 numbers, it's gonna take 10 x that amount of time to go through each individual one. That's, um, that's O of n. Are these like grades? What's like that? you look at somebody's code and be like, oh, that's open. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, it's kind of a, it's a hard, it's a hard line. It's, yeah, it is actually, it is actually a hard line. Yeah. And we'll see some examples in live examples. Okay. Um, o and log n is 10 X. The data means 20 more times. And the, the big one is uh, O N squared, which means like based on the input that I have, I guess if I have something that takes 10 times the data, it's going to take a hundred, times the amount of time to go through. And this is what happens generally when you have a loop within a loop. Um, so, so this doesn't necessarily speak to the type of data you're taking in. It just speaks to both the, the, the functions. Yeah, yeah. So the how com complex is your function in relation to the data set that you, you pass in? So just a little bit more, it's kind of like if I have O of, o of one, this is constant. No matter what, what size you give me, you can give me an array of 50 million things. I don't care. I'm only choosing, for this one, I'm only choosing the first, the first thing. So it's kind of like, even if I give you one thing inside of an array, or if I give you 50 things inside of the array, this is only looking at the very first thing in the array saying, is it red, true or false? And that's, that's all they get its return. I don't care about the rest of it. Um, a real life example is that in Africa, there was a town that basically had just gotten internet. And when they just got internet, the issue was that the internet was really, really slow. And it was slow to the point where uploading anything would have taken forever, like months and months and months. So they said, you know what? Our internet is so bad that we're willing to race it against a carrier pigeon, All right? So they had like a gig of data and they wanted to send it to the next town over about 50 miles away. So they started uploading it. At the same time, they had a carrier pigeon with a flash drive attached to its leg. And you can kind of, I mean, the, it got a lot of attention. But the, event, the story was that the pigeon got there first. But it's, it's kind of like an unfair advantage because the pigeon has a flash drive. Whether or not that flash drive has one item on it, or like one megabyte of data or one gigabyte of data, it's going to be the same weight. It doesn't change the weight of it. So all you're taking into consideration at that point is like how it's like that bird's going to fly no matter what, no matter how much data is in its, on its leg because that flash drive weighs the same amount. Whereas when you're talking about uploading data, there's a whole bunch of other things, um, other factors in play. Um, o of n is the other big one that we need to know of. It's uh, basically linear time. It's going to grow linearly based on what you're passing it. So we have a bunch of... Uh, we have this one method called contains. I have an array of things like we, this is linear search. This is what it is. I have an array and I have a value. I'm going to iterate over everything inside the array and return true um, if the item is equal to the value that I'm looking for. But this means that I have to iterate over every single one of them until I find the, um, the, uh, the culprit, so to speak. Um, and the Real life example of this you can think of is like more money, more problems. Like, I don't know if this is actually true, but statistically it is true. Like the more money you have, the more problems you may have. It, it's, it's not a perfect analogy, but you can kind of see like, as you get more money, you have to worry about more things, right? You have to worry about bodyguards and you have to worry about bulletproof cars and things of that nature. It would, it would be a good life. <laughs> And then we have O n squared, quadratic time. So linear, again, it's like based on the data set, it's going to increase going up like this. Quadratic time reads more like a parabola, like a, the, uh, the ugly half of a parabola. So it just kind of goes like that on, on how complex something is. So I have this piece of code right here. 
Um, I have an array. I'm going to like, so I have an array and a results, an empty results array. I'm gonna, if I have a loop within a loop like this, I have to wait for one loop to fully finish and then I go to the second thing in the, inside this array and then I have to fully finish that and so on and so forth. So let's grab this and show it in real time. Uh, let's just say I guess let's just let's just read through this code and then we can see how how fast it is. So let's say that I, I have an array of let's say uh, one, two, three, four, five. I have an empty array called results, and I'm going to iterate over each one of these numbers. So the first time through, number one is equal to one. And then I'm going to iterate over this array again. Number two is also equal to one, and then so on and so forth. And keep in mind, number one is, remains one. So if I wanted to do like every possible permutation of this, like one goes with one, one goes with two, one goes with three, one goes with four. It's kind of like if you were assigning groups, so to speak. Um, you want to get all the unique pairs. The first time through, number one remains one, and then you have to iterate through one through five like this. Then you move on to number two, and then you go one through five again, number three, so on and so forth. It's, it's a very inefficient way of doing things. So whenever I see a loop within a loop, I know immediately this is gonna take like at least, um, was it 20 times? Uh, yeah, but n, n squared, the amount of time, what the n number of inputs that you give me, that squared is how much longer it's gonna take. So if you give me six things, it's gonna take 36 amount of time to actually run it. And that makes sense because I have, I have 36 times that I'm running this loop. Uh, for us, this, this is 25. Now let's just run this and see what happens. Uh, so 0.008. One take longer than the other? That's strange. Two, three, four, one, three. Well, uh, I will figure that one out and come back to it. Um, but yeah, O of one means that no matter what size you give to me, it's going to be constant all, all the way around. So it's kind of like, just print the first thing in an array. You can give me 50 million things or one thing, it'll still take the same amount of time. O of n means that like, if I give you a problem with five things inside of your array, then it's going to take five times the amount of time is if there were only one thing. And then when you come to this point where the quadratic time, when you have a loop within a loop oftentimes, um, it's going to take, uh, that amount of time squared. So if I were to print out, um, if I were to print out all of this kind of stuff, and I had an array of five numbers, this is going to this is going to execute five times. Um, but within each one of those five times of execution, this is also going to execute five times. So five squared, twenty-five times the amount of times that it would have taken me originally. And the key takeaways you need to know about Big O is one: it's going to be on your interviews. So there's a ton of resources that I'm going to pass. I'm going to start passing out regarding Big O, but the key takeaways are as you are starting to build out searching algorithms and and just efficiency in general, arrays are not your friend. 
the arrays are really good for specific things, keeping track of order and indexes. Um, that's totally fine. But arrays in terms of speed are not your friend because they have to keep track of those indexes. Whereas a hash only needs to keep track of a key and a value. It doesn't need to keep track of that index. And with that, it's much faster to iterate. Um, wherever possible, don't have a loop within a loop. That's the first thing I look, well, one of the first things that I do look for. And I do see it in a few people's code, which is fine. But avoid doing loops within loops because it's going to eventually take more time than you would, than you would like. And then finally, um, if you see yourself doing things like loop within loop, or the worst one is you have a loop within a loop within a loop, because which I've seen, um, consider refactoring it. There's probably a better way to do it rather than just shoving it all together. And that's pretty much all I had for Big O. Let's kind of take a look at what we've got for today. Go ahead, Pete. Uh, yes, so put things in perspective. Mm -hmm. um, when you were to search on Google, like a general search looking for dog pictures or something, and it's it gives you a, a time on the bottom, like it says this search took you know, so many hundreds to thousands of seconds. Um, is that is it referring to the big O notation, or is that like total time to search for through the databases? And, I mean, like this thing. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea how Google search works. That is uh, a little bit. Yeah, I don't know how Google search works. Um, I would assume that they would probably want to benchmark the one, whatever algorithm they're used to, so they're searching and that's probably a way to, to do that. But that's, we don't know where that yeah, is. I, I don't know what the I don't know how they write the software for Google search. Yeah. I feel like the search folks are supposed to be like the pinnacle of yeah. the at Google. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are. Uh, I mean, uh, you're going to I think next week. Uh, so as I mentioned. We're, next week we're going to start like behavioral and technical interview questions. One of the people that's going to come in is uh, his name is Brian Willard. He's here on our board. I used, may have met him during the like the initial meetup week. Uh, he's going to give you some Google level whiteboarding questions, and those are it's it's fun. It's very it's very difficult. He'll like give you like a series of shapes and say like I have a line down the middle. How do I get this shape from here to here? Like what's the? I was like what. So there's, there's things like that. Um, so you want to get your mind blown, check out Google Code Jam, like the yearly contest they do, where, yeah, oh, wow, that's the questions on there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we can have some fun this afternoon and do that as well, um, just to do some like puzzle problems that they used to do. Some of them are more case problems, like how many gallons of white paint were sold in the US last year. Um, you know, things things of that of that nature. Uh, this one, I'm not, I just don't know how Google search works. I, I, I didn't expect like this. Opinion. All right, so it is Friday. Um, we do have an assessment this coming Monday regarding a lot of OO stuff, and we have an even number of people. So we are going to pair up today. Um, there are two challenges. Um, one is the budgeting exercise. It's another large problem, kind of like the bank accounts and the ice cream and freezers like that. Um, and then you have some big O problems just to kind of like stretch yourselves if you want to dig more into it. The, the big thing I want people to focus on is kind of like this budget and any sort of OO concepts that you haven't quite gotten yet. So what we'll do is we'll break off into pairs. Um, if you want to, if you and your pair want to take a look at some like interview, whiteboarding interview questions, I'm happy to go over that, just kind of get a teaser for next week. And if you wanted me to review anything with you and your pair, um, we, I can come over to you or we can come up here and do it on the board. But this is basically uh, what we're going to do for the rest of today. All good? You need to go over the weekend one more? Yeah, we'll stop the recording.